brought to you by Allman Auctions, world's leader in antique tractor auctions. It was the greatest thing at its time. When it first, in fact, when the six cylinders came out and replaced the two cylinders, that was kind of a sore spot for a lot of people. But as uh, soon as they got on it, they forgot all that pain that it caused. Uh, it's by far advanced. Even today, over 30 years after being introduced, this workhorse still looks sharp and still puts in a good day's work for its owner, Tom Manning of Dallas Center, Iowa. In the spring, I start off with uh, putting it on the planter to plant, and then as soon as that's done, I put it on the cultivator and do most of the cultivating with it, and uh, mow hay, rake hay, steers nice and it drives nice and rides good. Uh, it's just one of the better tractors John Deere ever built. In fact, the Big Green 4020 is the machine considered by many to be the one that put John Deere out front as far as tractors go. I would say probably that the 4020 is the one that uh, broke it out front of the other competition uh, as far as being the handiest and uh, uh, all purpose for heavy work and light work. You know, it just, they didn't build it too cumbersome. It, it's the right size to do things with and still got plenty of horsepower. The 4020 six-cylinder engine rates 78 horsepower at the drawbar, and it was one of the first deer tractors to top a $10,000 sales price. The power steering is by far exceeds any of the rest of the tractors I've had. Uh, it, uh, it just effortless to steer them. Tom traded a two-cylinder John Deere for his 4020. Ironically, now Tom is an avid collector and restorer of the old Pop and Johnny two-cylinder tractors. This is a 1931 GP. Uh, I found it in the Coon Rapids area. The wheels were buried down in the dirt, and we had to cut a few trees down to get it out. This is a 1936A. Uh, it's the very first tractor that I restored. And uh, it's the first one I've t taken to a two-cylinder club show. This is a 1958. 630. Uh, it's the last vintage of the two cylinders that John Deere built. Seeing these beauties lined up, you'd think they were auditioning for a Hollywood movie. Well, you're close. When the Bridges of Madison County was being filmed in Iowa, the filmmakers contacted Tom. Yeah, the people that were filming the movie uh, Bridges of Madison County, I thought they'd pick one of these here tractors, but no. When they seen that 4020, that's the one they wanted right off the bat, so. Yes, sir. Tom's 4020 had a chance to become a star. Just one problem. Tom had his own plans for his tractor. Exactly. It was about harvest time, and I was in need of using it, so I told him it was going to be a little costly for him to have that on the set. Not only did director Clint Eastwood get to use the 4020 in the movie, the day they filmed the scene with Meryl Streep driving the tractor, Tom was on the set himself. I didn't know that she was going to drive it like 16 times before they got the right shot, but uh, every time she'd move it up to where she'd bail off of it and go answer the phone, uh, I'd have to drive it back to the line again. So, And the whole set is watching, attentive on what's happening, so it was quite a deal. So, it must have been difficult teaching a movie actress how to drive a 4020. Not really. I thought it'd be a lot harder teaching her how to drive it than what it was. I would say she's probably been on one before. Clint had more trouble than Merrill did driving it. <laughs> Clint had a hard time getting it in gear, which was, you know, it's kind of customary. Anybody that's drove a 4020, you got to be tough with them. Speaking of tough, Tom Manning, the film critic, says there's one thing about the scene that features his tractor that's a little far-fetched. Well, the fact that she's driving the tractor up the driveway and she hears the phone ring in the house. And so rather than drive the tractor on up to the house, she jumps, stops the tractor, jumps off and runs to the house and, to answer the phone. And as anybody would know, it's pretty hard to hear the phone when you over the motor noise of a tractor. Hey, that's Hollywood. So after working more than 30 years and appearing in a movie, how soon before this 1965 John Deere 4020 joins the retirement ranks? 
I don't know. I suppose the same time I do. <laughs> Hopefully I can keep it in good shape until that point anyway. Well, I'd say this 4020 is in good hands. Now, Tom, those sunglasses do look sharp, but hey, let's not forget which one of you is the movie star.